2021, I think, was a very unusual year in, in our lifetime. It was, of course, marked by the pandemic. Uh, it started with the Delta variant. It's ending with the Omicron variant. But be that as it may, I think from a tech perspective, we have a lot to be very proud of. We responded individually in teams, in organizations and companies, entire nations, very admirably to the challenges. Whether it was helping the pharma uh, industry to go through that entire life cycle of producing the right vaccines, the right medications, testing and certifying them, and then distributing them in billions across the world. Unprecedented. The healthcare industry, in terms of the testing infrastructure, manufacturing test kits in India, for example, runs on a huge data marketplace now. These are things that we can be very justifiably proud that we played a role as IT people. In 2020, we were called upon to improve the resilience of every industry, enabling touch-free operations, enabling work from home, keeping essential services alive and kicking. Even ordering your pizza at home on an app was done by tech people. That has shifted in 2021 to not just enabling resilience to all our familiar technologies, but now to look at the future and say, why, if this is not going to be the last major crisis that the world will go through, what is the adaptability in IT and systems and processes that we can think of and start delivering them at scale? So the 2021 challenge has moved from resilience to adaptability. And then 2021 also saw the emergence of perhaps a much bigger opportunity, a much bigger global challenge for all of us, which is sustainability. If you look at this, it's such a humongous planet-wide challenge, planet-wide opportunity for each of us to play a part. Many technologies will come to play. IT will be at front and center because measuring, tracking, coordinating all these responses for a better planet are going to need a huge effort from all of us, not just in a year, but perhaps for decades to come. So all in all, a tough year, individually, personally, for all of us in every part of the world, but one filled with a sense of purpose and achievement, and one filled with a very positive view for the future which is lying ahead of us. 2021, I think, uh, was a landmark year for many things in tech. And I'll sort of bucketize them into four uh, different categories just so that we have some structure to go through them. First of all, I think uh, this is the year where cloud came of age. And it's no longer a question of should I go on to cloud or should I not? But now it's a it's a massive shift which is happening worldwide. Every industry, every part of the world, every every uh, every individual is now saying that this is the way to go. Uh, that means that uh, data at scale, uh, different data architectures, different ways of getting data from uh, disparate data sources into a cloud architecture, making it accessible, and so on. So that part is going. Once you're on a common platform like that, cybersecurity just follows, right? You have to now expand your capabilities, your thought process, your threat perception, all of that to make sure that uh, you're on a secure uh, infrastructure uh, going forward. Uh, AI in, in a conventional way has also come of age. AI for automation now, I think, has been well understood and it's, it's becoming very mainstream. Uh, AI in the front end, you know, chatbots, uh, you know, uh, all of us sitting at home ordering pizza it said, you know, Alexa, get me a pizza. And, it, you know, it suddenly magically shows up half an hour later. Those are, you know, world of science fiction all in one year. So that, I think, is uh, what I would describe as the here and now mainstream uh, technologies. What are emerging now? What are the things that we have already started trying in 2021, which are going to become big? And people will look back and say, oh, guys, these guys were doing a lot of stuff, but they actually... Uh, had the energy to look after uh, these new things. 
So let me pick one big theme, which is AI. And uh, some of you will remember that uh, GPT-3 was announced just when uh, 2020 was coming to an end. And it, it talked about many things, but what caught my eye was that AI was writing code. Right? The demos, uh, which happened in late 2020 and through 2021, many implementations, many teams have started experimenting with this totally different paradigm of saying that a machine can now write code based on some very high level hints that you, uh, human beings will give the machine. Uh, this is pretty, pretty cool at one level, but it's also pretty worrying in the sense of, you know, what is it going to do to AI, to what do, do this about ethics, what about controls and so on. But that's a good problem to have. I think we'll have to figure that one out very quickly. So AI coming in for things like writing code, that's, I think, uh, a very exciting uh, but uh, at the same time needs a lot of thought process to make it work well. AI to do things like digital twins came of age in 2021. Uh, we have been doing digital twins in AI for a decade in industrial contexts and many others, but this is the first time where twins were applied in many different contexts. I mean, twins of entire cities. City of Pune was, for example, twinned uh, for the pandemic response of that uh, city administration. Uh, the human skin was, uh, was twinned. And, and so that, you know, many different treatments can be tested without uh, recourse to animal trials and so on and so forth. Uh, entire business processes were twinned to say, if I run a campaign like this, what will happen? How many people will respond uh, to that marketing message, et cetera, et cetera, uh, and so on. So digital twins really, you know, and, and they're all AI powered, they're all data powered and so on. So that it's like, wow, you know, is that something uh, cool or what right, in that sense? So AI driven, uh, I think everything is become very exciting, very scaled, right from GPT-3 and code all the way to twins and everything else in between. The other big area that I'd like to draw attention to is what if I call it ecosystem technologies. See, we have always had APIs. We've always thought about uh, the fact that, you know, we can encapsulate a microservice and call it from some place and, you know, multiple people can make sense of it. And the uh, many Great examples from the digital world, you know, the Google Maps API literally, uh, you know, is, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a star example of, of what a powerful API can do. This has become mainstream in today's world. People are turning conventional architectures into microservices and saying I can publish APIs internally, which all my uh, developers within uh, an enterprise can use. Uh, more APIs are getting into the cloud marketplaces, depending on which cloud vendor you're in. They will always have a choice of their APIs, partner APIs, startup system APIs, uh, tech company APIs published so that people can mix and match and, and use those. So that's, again, another uh, uh, ecosystem enabler that is connecting the dots across various uh, capabilities. 5G is going to be another ecosystem technology. It's not just a technology for the telecom industry and for faster downloads of movies and so on, that of course will be there. The consumer play in 5G, I think, is, is, is going to be the first one. But 5G is going to be driving a lot more of industrial and other uh, applications, perhaps in daily life, closer to each one of us, that are going to be built and connecting multiple industries to come together. Uh, our good friends in, in the blockchain community, I think they have been very active as well. Um, you know, we would have heard about, I'm sure you would have heard about, uh, uh, you know, the, the non-fungible tokens, the NFTs, or, or decentralized finance, DeFi, uh, many different protocols to connect the virtual world and the real world and, and, and moving seamlessly between the two, uh, to the extent that now central banks are now looking at these, both NFTs as well as uh, DeFi technologies to say, what will be the future of finance? I've never seen such action uh, coming together in the financial ecosystem. And if the financial ecosystem does it, everybody is, is paying attention to it in a significant way. So these are all in that bucket of what I would call ecosystem uh, technology. And then what about out there, the, the futuristic ones, the, uh, the blue sky ones? So the blue sky, I would just pick two or three. Uh, you know, 2021 was when quantum, I think, finally came out and said, okay, you know, we are for real. Don't worry, guys. It's you know, all the uh, the uncertainty is over. This decade, the, the 2020s, is when real quantum computation will become practical, affordable, available, et cetera, et cetera. Right? So uh, immediately, everybody is boning up on, on, on uh, you know, prime factorization and who's going to break the first uh, 
instead of uh, large prime fees of uh, public key and uh, public key and infrastructure and so on. So that part is of course there, and already the cyber guys are going after post quantum cryptography in a big way because now a quantum machine actually is feasible in the in the coming decade, and so you need to get your defenses uh, up for that. But be that as it may, quantum by itself is going to take off in terms of interest in the next three, four, five years, which is about the time frame and good practical machines will become available for us to actually run those algorithms on. So if you are interested in quantum, this is the time to start figuring out and how to get there because in three to five years time, you will be getting a lot more work to do uh, uh, in, this, in this particular area. Other computational uh, platforms will come. I mean, optical is, is making a comeback in some ways in the context of uh, large data sets and especially AI computation. So lots of good startup companies are building uh, optical uh, processing capabilities. You know, GPU compute is maturing uh, as fast as it can in the AI context as well. So other compute platforms, of course, uh, will be interesting for us to, uh, to track. But I would leave you with one thought that computation is going to play a bigger and bigger role in every aspect of human life. Uh, metaverse has been talked about, uh, which is to create a completely uh, virtual universe, which is sort of mirroring or paralleling the human, uh, uh, the real universe, so to speak. Uh, this is the first year where that phrase has been used to such uh, extent. Uh, whether it works or not, it's going to set off a whole train of technology and thought and visualization and so on. So pay attention to things of that nature. 2021 will be marked by not just the maturing of technologies like cloud and cybersecurity and data and, and so on, but the year where AI really became mainstream, a lot of ecosystem technologies came forward and things like quantum and metaverse uh, are rounding off the year. So walkthrough of... Uh, a year in about six months. Oh boy, <laughs> one piece of advice. Okay, um, I'll make it a long sentence then. Um, first of all, I think continue to learn. Uh, if you're going to be a techie, you're in it for life and you have to continuously learn, uh, relearn and perhaps unlearn a few things. You have to be able to adapt to new capabilities, new circumstances, new challenges all the time. So that mindset of adaptability, I think, is uh, is going to be very valuable. Learn to do things. Don't just learn for the sake of learning, but actually do. Get your hands dirty, write code, design things put it into uh, somebody's hands as a real end user, listen to their feedback, test, iterate, perfect. I think that goes as a core competency of any techie. And to round it off, going back to learn, learn from what doesn't work, what works, and repeat the cycle in that adaptable framework. So that's essentially what I would uh, I would, I would say is, is, is the one sentence or perhaps one paragraph view of my piece of advice uh, for all techies. In the future, a lot of things that I talked about as mainstream today will, of course, mature, scale, become widespread, and everybody will be you know, required to learn things about cloud, things about cybersecurity, things about data, architecting systems, building adaptable uh, API-based frameworks, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that is a is a no brainer i mean if you're going to be in tech you better do all of that and and uh, learn how to do it better faster more effectively etc the ai story i think is is a given right? almost everybody not just people in it and tech or computer science but everybody in every discipline uh, whether you're going to be an industrial and you're a mechanical engineer you're a chemical engineer you're a aeronautical engineer, an oil and gas person, doesn't matter. You have to be able to be conversant with machine learning, deep learning, reinforcement learning, whatever, and be able to be competent, not just conversational with it, but competent about it. You should be able to write your, uh, your own uh, uh, models. You should be able to run them, test them, perhaps even put them in production, or at least be an intelligent participant in discussions about it. 
in the in the, the so called business world people in marketing people in uh, hr people in finance also need that capability to understand what ai is if i can just zero in on one thing that you should be worried about both as a techie as well as a non techie using ai we are used to computing being correct if you put 1 plus 1 on a on a 500 rupee calculator even a 2 year old or a 3 year old will say 1 plus 1 equal to 2 even if you do it 200 times ai doesn't work like that ai is inherently probabilistic I will say that you know what one plus one. I've seen two hundred experiments. Most of them seem to say two, but there is a one percent probability that it could be three, but it could also be one. Right? AI is inherently probabilistic. That's what I said. When you look at AI as a skill, you have to be able to think probabilistically and not deterministic. Lastly, the things that I said about the future, you know, ecosystem enablers, whether it's you know, blockchain has not been a you know. it's been a hot on off kind of a skill for the last decade or so uh, most of the people who did blockchains at crypto and and they are finally getting some success but blockchain as an enabler for newer business models is going to happen in the coming years so don't worry so much about blockchain technologies but if you can figure out blockchain applications the way it's going i mentioned nfts i mentioned decentralized finance as two examples there'll be many more like that and that is what might be useful as an ecosystem enabling uh, skill similarly with 5g 5g is not just for the the telecom people 5g is about everybody the application layer in 5g which is about the way the world will communicate machines will communicate iot will work embed itself in everything that is what i think is the future of uh, of that that ecosystem technology and finally what about things like quantum uh, i'd say start brushing up on your high school physics uh, because you before you start programming a quantum machine you need to understand what is quantum right otherwise it will look like complete gobbledygook to you so get start getting familiar with some of those concepts and uh, fundamentals of uh, of a techie will always be there uh, make sure that you are disciplined you are rigorous about the way you write your code the way you collaborate agile development distributed teams verification testing bug fixing analytic skills those go without saying if you don't have any of those then uh, you know you just wave hands but you actually don't do tech stuff you know you are you are a talker not a doer so tech people do learn adapt scale 